Welcome back. Working on our light bar for the police car. At the end of the last video, I, I kind of liked how this uh, spotlight was looking inside here. So I thought I would uh, kind of orient it with this light and then duplicate that for all the rest of them. Just orient it like that. Duplicate it for all these lights. And I'm going to duplicate it for the back side as well. position them here and then we're going to see how it looks like when it's all put together. So let's kind of test this out in my render view. This might be a little too bright. So what we'll do is grab all of them, and let's go to Windows, General Editors, and we want the Attribute Spreadsheet. And then here I can take all their intensities, right now it's at 5, maybe lower those down to 2, since there's so many of them. Let's just render this section right here. Maybe one. So something like this might not be too bad. Here we go. So we have the light manager here. And here's all their exposures. Looks like I have to kind of just type it in here. So right now they're all exposures at 8. Let's take it down to 6 for all of them. So now it's not bright enough. Because I want that hot spot that we had. Let's try 7 maybe. Now it looks like 8 was good. Looks like we're getting that kind of over brightness. Alright, well maybe we can um, play with the uh, light, the um, bright light material. It's kind of dim right now. Let's look for, there we go, blue light material. And so the emission color right now is this color. Let's maybe bump that up a bit. Okay, here we go. Now we're getting added some base color back in. Now it's getting more of a bright, some brightness in there. So with the base color with white, and then we have that blue emission color. That's looking a lot better. So for the red light, we're going to do the same. So select that over here and pull that color back in. And when we add the spotlights, we'll hopefully get a similar result here. Let's close this for now. I'll grab my spotlights. Control D to duplicate. And move these over here. Make sure they're lined up. Go back to our render view, just kind of see what that looks like. Yeah, now we're getting somewhere. So the light effects coming along. We still got more to do with our uh, materials, I know, and we're gonna mess with this. Probably figure something out to do in a post to kind of brighten this up a little bit. But I think overall, though, this light effect looks pretty good for the most part. Again, we're just trying to sell the effect. It's not something that people in the audience of the play should really be focusing on that much. Okay, <clears throat> so what we're going to do now is go ahead and attach these lights to their respective groups. This is group four. So we'll grab these two, 
middle mouse click and drag them into group 4. This is group 5. I assume this is group 6, but better safe than sorry to, than to assume. So I'm parenting these lights to these groups. This is group 1. So that whenever the group is rotating, the light will travel with it. Group 2. And then last must be group 3. See that? So now we're getting that kind of uh, relationship with lights you're traveling with the rotation of those things. Yeah, I think this effect overall, just having these shapes inside, uh, then we made the bottom of this platform chrome, and we're going to get some, a lot of little reflections in here and stuff that we can see this effect happening. So I think the overall result will be pretty good. I want to work on this outer shell now. I think the lights themselves, I think this blue and red sections look pretty good. Don't have to worry too much about them. Going forward, I think that's pretty much set. I mean, there's, there's stuff we could do, but overall, though, and I got my uh, render passes in here. We can kind of see different things that are happening. Indirect, specular. And, uh, transmission. Lots happening with the transmission. Transmission is all the uh, transparencies that we're getting. Okay. <clears throat> so this piece here has like a, like a grid of like little events or something right through here. So we're just going to represent that with a simple texture that will apply to that, I think. So let's open up. Photoshop, really simple texture of this to kind of put on here. And we're not going to worry about it being transparent. We'll probably just let it be like a butt map. It should be, uh, should be sufficient. All right, we'll make the uh, texture, let's say, let's make it a 1024. My computer's running a little bit slow, I think. Because this isn't for a game or anything, our, our texture size can be can be relatively large and shouldn't affect much. All right, now let's make like this line here, and let's go to select, modify. Let's smooth it. Let's say five, I guess, and then Alt Delete to fill in with black, so we get this. So I'm just gonna. Copy and paste it. I like these little measurement helpers that kind of show you that, hey, this is how far the last one was if you want this to be the same. I don't want to get too many actually, so I'm going to grab all these and duplicate them over here. Let's look at the picture again real quick. They're pretty close together, but we're gonna make it a little bit further apart just because we don't want a dither effect happening on the screen. And we're probably not gonna have as many of them as there are in the actual thing. Let's kind of center it. So, something like that. <clears throat> All right, let's just uh, try this out. So I'm gonna save this as a Targa don't need an alpha channel, so 24 bits should be fine. All right, so let's apply this. We have our, uh, let's delete this history, we don't need all that. We have our metal plate material here. So let's go down to the geometry section. We have a bump mapping. We're gonna apply a uh, file and we can find our texture uh, in our folder here. And then what we're gonna do, I'm gonna open up the hypershade real quick. So the metal plate material is what we're looking at here. So one thing that's nice about the Arnold render view, let's go with that. And also we can solo this 
image. I'm just going to apply it to the base color of the metal plate for now. Try and uh, there we go, so we can see it. So right now you can see where the grate is currently positioned. So we need to fix that with our UVs. So I'm going to go to the UV editor, UV editor, and I'm just going to go to UV. Let's just do an automatic for now. So the grate should go kind of wrap around this section here, right? Yeah, it goes down kind of around this this section of the piece. So what's these faces? be my primary faces I'm looking at. So let's go to UV and let's go ahead and just do a planar map. That should work from the front which is the Z axis project. There we go. I'll move those over here. Now these other faces we don't want the butt map to be on them so I'm just going to Just kind of stick them down here in in the corners. So we shouldn't see that gray anywhere else. And then this we'll bring back. So something like that. Okay. Let's go back to our hyper shade. We can cut off this from the base color. We don't actually want it on the color. We just did that so we could see it. And we can unsolo that. And then let's go back to, let's close this. Let's go back to the render view. See what the result we got from that. Now the bump might be too, too dense. Oh, because of the color. That's what happened. I had accidentally, uh, when I applied that texture to the color and then I took it off, it made the color go black. That's what happened. I forgot that that, hap that tends to happen sometimes. That's okay. Just look at, look at this right here. Okay, so there's our kind of pattern that we are getting. So... You can obviously see it's not um, dark in here. I might actually apply the image to the color after all. Just to, just so we can kind of darken in these holes. Let's see if that works. So if I apply this color to the base color, what happens? Yeah, okay. Yeah, that's pretty much what I want. So it just kind of fills in those those gaps. So yeah, that works pretty good. It's not too bad. So right here we have this part of the this this part down here. We can add that in. It might be another material to kind of apply those these two things. And as for the bump map, looks like it's a series of lines. Might be able to get away with just using a um, a material that. I mean a uh, texture that comes with Maya as opposed to making one in Photoshop. Material is going to go in this face right here. So I'm just going to right click and then assign new material. It's going to be an Arnold AI standard surface. Red glass panel. So this is going to be the plast thin plastic preset again. I think that's working pretty good. And the transmission can be the same as it was for the other stuff, which is 0.6. And the emission, I did have like a slight emission. So we can go ahead and do that again. So let's look at this red plastic that we had here. So it's 0 0.03. So the this one can be 0 0.03 as well. Let's go back over here and look we can have like a list of all our materials there we go so red glass panel and then we have red plastic I want these to be pretty much the same I could have just duplicated the plastic just use it again but um that's right okay let's see what that looks like so 
Sorry, my kids are kind of noisy. So you can kind of see it there. So transmission is 0.6. That's what the other one was, right? Yeah, 0.6. All right, so we'll probably need to add like a, a light in here and stuff to make that kind of lighten up, kind of like we did up here. All right, let's go ahead and duplicate. Let's see, can I just duplicate it here? Control D. Yeah, that worked. So we'll call this blue glass panel. Change all these to the blue color we have. like this face. Right click and say it's not existing material. It will be our blue glass panel like that. We'll add the butt map in a little bit. Alright, so again just for the purposes of what we're needing, it doesn't need to be too crazy. I'm probably even going more detail than I really need to than I really need to. But you know, just trying to make it look half decent. Let's go to our render cam. And we can make it a little bigger, maybe. Let's do 50%. See if our light can use some more brightness. So, I don't know about that, if I want it to be too bright. Because it is going to be on a, like a big screen up above everybody. And also, we can move it down. It's going to be toward the bottom of the screen. So let me go to my render cam here. Unlock the camera. So it's literally going to be... Let's, let's get the uh, resolution gate here. So it's like literally at the bottom of the screen, something like this. Let's uh, select the camera and rotation Y should be 180 to get it straight on. I just need to center it. Let's see, so we get rid of the plane. If we delete the plane, what does it look like? So it becomes a little bit more simple, which might be okay. Because again, for what we're needing it for, we're just it's just going to be up on the screen. Um, in the play room. Now, because this chrome is so uh, smooth, it's pretty black. So I might actually go in here and make it a little bit rough, rougher. Sort of specular rough, roughness. Let's increase that a little bit so we get more of that color in there. Because at such a low roughness, it was just reflecting blackness. So now we have some some of that silver metal color we're getting there. Yeah, something like that. That's looking pretty good, I think. Unless it's moving, it should be pretty neat, I think. And the rest of this is just going to be black. So we're not going to have any other details in the scene or anything. Anyway, yeah, making good progress. We've got a few other, a few little things to do, really, and then we'll be almost done, I think. So, yeah, a little simple little, little thing. Hope you're enjoying it so far. Let me know if you have any questions or comments, and thanks again for watching.